Hi, I'm Annie D. We're at D River Ranch. This is our family farm, and we've been here since 1989, so 28 years. In the early 90s, um, we started using cover crops on all of our ground, mostly wheat. And then from there, maybe in 2000, we started using some mixtures of different things and incorporating some radish, some uh, turnip and clover and Austrian winter peas, as well as black oats, and have seen just tremendous benefits on our farm to the soil health as well as the plant health of the following year. One of the main benefits I've seen with cover crops is the increased organic matter. It's really given us a lot more water holding capacity. It's given us better soil structure. We have used no-till and cover crops um, for years now, and the combination of those two have really improved our overall soil health. The benefits is with no-till, we've really increased our earthworm population. When it rains, like we get out into the field, the structure will hold our tractors up or combines up where somebody else's will just sink down where there's been a lot of rain because they don't have the same structure. They've destroyed their structure. We mostly fertilize for the spring cash crop. So it would be corn or soybeans or whatever else we choose. We fertilize in the fall at the same time as we put out the cover crop or the past couple years we've flown on the cover crop maybe in late July and then harvested the crop and then applied the fer fertilizer to the top. What we have found out is getting the cover crop under the rest of the plant debris has really made a mat and has really allowed that crop to come up without disturbing the soil. When we're going to plant corn, we try to terminate in late January or early February because it's going to be cold and the Roundup and the other chemicals aren't going to work as fast when it's cold. So it's going to take us four to six weeks for most of the material to break down. So maybe late January or the first part of February, we have to determine when it's gonna dry up and how long it's gonna be dry. We have terminated too soon, and then that's taken away our ability for that plant to take moisture out of the ground. So it's just kind of a fine balance, and every year is a new situation, every year is a new challenge. Um, and then for beans, usually about two to three weeks before we're getting ready to plant them, because by that time, the temperature, the outside temperatures have warmed up, and the chemicals will go through the plants much quicker and they will die down much quicker. So we do not, we want to make sure we get rid of those turnip and radish before they get to seeding because then they're very hard to kill, but they, they will die and mostly break down. So we've just, we've been very satisfied. They'll leave a real big hole in the ground, but it doesn't seem to make a problem with um, getting a good plant stand. So it's, we've been very happy with those. I would suggest to farmers that are getting ready to try to move into no-till and cover crops to do it on a small acreage until they understand what's going to happen. So if they start small and they understand what their problems are, because they'll have some, and everybody has different problems, but some of them we've already faced here, and I'm happy to help people that have faced theirs, and then gradually increase when they become comfortable with the situation that they have.